Welcome back to Fly Time with me, Telis Katsugianos, and we are now into episode 11. And it's a special one, once again. Uh, and this, if you're gonna like look at the story behind this fly, uh, what I know, the first time I saw this pattern was from Mikkel Fredin, very famous uh, fly, tire, and salmon angler. Uh, it's called the Black and Green Helmet, which is. Uh, it's very similar to any other salmon fly, uh, but it has some small features that I'm going to show you, and it works very good in, in a lot of different waters, but will be categorized a little bit like the typical Norway River, where it has a little bit more green tone in the water. But I've caught fish on that fly in other waters as well. And for me, it is a little bit special because of this fish. This is my first salmon over 10 kilos, and I caught that in Orkla. You can even see the fly here, the black and green helmet. Uh, weigh, this fish was 12 kilos, and uh, ah, a lot of years ago, as you can see. I'm a little bit older and a little bit wiser now, but I'm still as happy every time I catch a salmon. This is still, still my personal best from that river, so of course this fly has a little bit special meaning for me and uh, I think we should get started with the black and green helmet for the black and green helmet I am of course using a green tube to make it look as cool as possible uh, and then I'm taking one millimeter 1.8 millimeter inner tubing and then I'm putting the three millimeter on and you can see it's cut a little bit diagonally it makes it easier to start tying and attaching it and also makes it way easier when you're gonna tie and come down from the thick down to the thin part if it's completely straight like this it makes it much much trickier and it's di more difficult to create a good trans uh, transition between the thick and the thin one I'm uh, making sure that I have about a half centimeter here uh, that makes the hook holder uh, more or less tied into the fly. The three millimeter uh, fits most good uh, salmon uh, tube hooks. Next material we're going to use is uh, pearl tinsel strip. Uh, also works very nice as uh, like backs on scuds and uh, check nymphs and stuff. If you find it a little bit tricky to attach due to the fact that it's pretty broad, you can do like this that you cut it a little bit diagonally like so makes it way easier to attach and also when we start wrapping it wait like there there we go You can also, now I'm using the white th thread, It's uh, it does hide it pretty good, but the, of course in this scenario the thread will peek through a little bit. But if you attach it in the front and wrap it backwards and forward instead, then with no thread underneath you get an even better look. But this uh, is way faster and easier way to tie it. Okay, next step is adding a little bit of dubbing, and that's about what we're going to do with our bodywork. Uh, blended ice dub in fiery black, or any other black kind of ice dub will do, of course. Uh, I'm just going to cover this, so it's about almost the same amount of uh, dubbing as uh, that pearl tinsel. Making sure that's so. Of course, when we're tying a relatively black fly like this, uh, now you can see I'm just at the edge, uh, the tip here on the thick tube is just beneath here. So this is where I want to attach my first wing, or sometimes even on top of the thick part, depending on how large the body is. The longer the body is, the less I want to tie on the thin tube. Uh, there we go. The first wing. Uh, bright green, in my opinion, is a favorite one. The black and green 
it's a very very nice fly and you can choose uh, nuances and everything depending on what you your personal favorite is okay i'm taking out a little bit like there looking for that natural taper in the wing pulling off a little bit like that starting to look for that natural taper put the wing between your finger and finger and thumb and pull your finger backwards now you look at this what's happening here now you can see that that slide and then will create a taper in our wing as well as you can see here this is a little bit too much right now so i'm gonna take away a little bit i think it's a little bit too overdressed personal opinion it's uh, i rather fish a fly that's uh, a little bit too slim than a fly that's a little bit too thick now when you're tying it in reverse as usual uh, remember that the short should be on top and the long is underneath due to the fact that when we are folding this it's going to be the opposite and there we go maybe want to squeeze that down a little bit more right the next step is adding flash and i'm using angel hair green and i would love to have this one you see this has a little bit pearl and one green uh, those are very nice together with the bright green especially that pearl one a lot of these angel hairs the blended saltwater ones has a lot of nice strands in it so you can get a little bit mixed colors make sure that these are not the same length because they will stick together otherwise now we're gonna use hackle either rooster saddle or in this case i'm gonna use soft hackle patch in black and i'm trying to find a feather with the right length of fibers the total length of the hackle when it's wrapped should be about a third of the total wing length uh, it will create a very nice uh, proportion for the human eye that i'm cutting at you see i've cleaned what i don't want to use the feather has a natural bend as you can see this is convex and this is concave the convex should be facing you when attaching it so when you're tying it this should be pointing that way not towards you because when you are hackling or wrapping this if it's tied wrong it the fibers will point forward instead of backwards attaching it up on that ugly hump and locking it just beneath on the thin makes it easier to really get a good grip take your scissor use that hard 90 degree angle not the cutting part put that towards your hackle and slowly just pull that up and it's important that you're uh, you're duplicating or you're uh, doing this on that side of the feather that will hit your hook shank or tube first and since i'm wrapping this uh, f uh, in that direction it's that part that i'm uh, manipulating with the scissor because this is the one that will hit down like that pull it back pinch release about two or three wraps on that uh, hump there and then the rest just beneath tight to cover in this scenario of course a black thread is better but then you have to change in the middle uh, but there's uh, as we did in another episode there's no problem changing the thread uh, but it's just this hackle part more or less that uh, would be better with a black but if you hackle properly it won't show anyway take your brush and just brush that a little bit comb through the wing there we go and the final step here now is adding that black wing and this of course should be a little bit longer than the green i prefer using fox hair because most of the time it has the same 
I know what I get, if you know what I mean. It's, it has a certain structure to it. Of course, there's different, there's varieties in tails and, and pieces of hair. Sometimes it's uh, stiffer, sometimes it's fluffier, softer. And after a while, you find what you prefer. Uh, but what you might like uh, might be totally wrong for the next guy. It depends on what you're using it for. All hairs has a purpose uh, or has a good value depending on if you know how to use it properly. S then like this and cut. For example, stiffer hair is good uh, for underwings, big flies. You need to have a little bit of support. That's why we, for example, use bucktail in sun rays. And then I prefer using super soft hair in uh, uh, small flies. Tying it reversed, forward, and then fold that back, just like so. One, two, three. And then pull that brush through. There we go. Okay, that's about it. Now we're just gonna add those cheeks Measuring those out so there are about a third of the wing just as the hackle for those proportions. It looks better Like so and I'm unwrapping a few two laps and then I'm adding those back. It's a good way to uh, Make sure that you're not adding too much on the head even though we we're using a cone head for this one uh, You still can have too much stuff going on in the front. It needs to be relatively clean anyway. Depends of course how uh, the disc or cone that you have is uh, shaped. There we go. And then just adjusting that a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna finish that by adding a little bit of glue to the thread. About a couple of centimeters. It's enough for those five, six Wraps and then cut and cut that off and cut that one off. When I put on a cone head, I always take the fly off from the needle. In my opinion, it makes it easier and it's safer. It is otherwise a risk that you will crack the or yeah, destroy the needle. Okay, I'm gonna put that cone head on, which is a black and green. Helmet that means that the cone is green If this if you notice this sometimes that the cone is a little bit tight You can put the uh, scissor in and just uh, jank a little bit, but this one uh, fits perfectly Then I'm gonna add just a little drop of glue here and then Put that on Pinch in here and then pull You're making sure that that goes all the way towards the wing and hackle then you cut that off, leaving just one and a half, two millimeters maximum. And then I'm burning like so. For example, here, if you would use a black tube instead, you can create a nice effect here. But I like to have it uh, green all the way through. And uh, this is the black and green helmet. It's a very nice fly for uh, those a little bit green rivers that you most of the time find in, for example, Norway or... Uh, but I really like this one. It's a good fly and uh, hope you liked it. The black and green helmet or variation of it.